Today, we're going to review the most commonly used surgical instruments. Now, different specialties will often incorporate unique tools into operations, depending on what procedure they're performing. But generally speaking, these are the instruments that you're most likely to encounter in any general surgery operating room. Another small disclaimer before we begin, you may find that your home institution has different names for some of these instruments. Names can vary by institution, specialty, even surgeon. But I tried to stick with the most common names and names you could easily look up if you wanted to read more about any one particular instrument. Now, let's start with everyone's favorite, the scalpel. There are many different shapes to scalpel blades, but the ones you're most likely to encounter are the number 10, number 11, and number 15 blades. 10 blades are great for large incisions like laparotomies, whereas the 15 blade is often used for making smaller, finer incisions. The 11 blade is used for making precise incisions, and a sawing motion is often used to extend incisions made with this blade. Next, we'll move to our other cutting instruments, the scissors. The two that you're most likely to encounter are Mayo scissors and Metzenbaum scissors. Mayo scissors are heavier and are often used to cut suture. Metzenbaum scissors are lighter and are often used as a dissecting tool and to cut tissue. Pickups or forceps can come in a variety of sizes, but the most important thing to pay attention to are the teeth. Tooth forceps will pierce the tissue you pick up with it. Whereas non-tooth forceps will crush the tissue. Tooth forceps are often used to pick up tissue such as skin and fascia, while non-tooth forceps are better for blood vessels and bowel. Our tooth forceps include the Adson pickup, rat tooth pickup, and bonnie pickup. Non-tooth forceps include debakey pickups, and Russian pickups. Clamps can be some of the hardest instruments to learn as these often have the greatest variety in names. However, Alice and Babcock clamps are some of the easiest to identify due to the unique shape of the end of the instruments. These two instruments look very similar, but you'll notice Alice clamps have teeth on the end while Babcock clamps are smooth on the end. Coker clamps are also easily identifiable due to the large teeth they have on the end. Remember, toothed instruments will pierce whatever tissue you grab with them, so cokers are great clamps to be placed on tissue such as fascia, especially when you need a little extra grip during those tight closures. Mosquitoes are small clamps with grooves all along the entire length of the jaws, and you'll often see these snapped onto the ends of suture. Kelly and cryo clamps are larger and can be used to grasp or dissect through tissue. Cryo clamps will have grooves along the entire length of its jaw while Kelly clamps will only have grooves at the tip. These clamps can also come in a variety of sizes, straight versus curved, and even different levels of fineness. Next, we have needle drivers. You'll notice the end of a needle driver is much heavier, perfect for keeping needles in place. These can also come in a variety of sizes, and you may even see needle holders called castros.
you'll most likely encounter these castros if you're rotating through vascular or cardiac surgery. Last, and every student's favorite instrument, the retractor. These come in a variety of forms, but the ones you're most likely to encounter are the Army-Navy retractor, the Wheatland retractor, and Richardson retractor. The Army-Navy retractor is great for retracting small amounts of tissue, while the Richardson retractor is great for retracting large amounts of tissue, as well as deep tissue structures. The Wheatlander retractor is a self-retaining retractor that's often used for exposing deep structures or even for smaller surgical incisions. As you can see, there's a wide variety of surgical instruments. A few ways to help learn all of these instruments is to pay attention to what instrument the surgeon is asking for and what the scrub hands to them. You can also ask the scrub if they'll review the surgical instruments with you at the end of the case, and it's always best to do this at the end of a case when both you and the surgical instruments no longer need to be sterile and once all of the counts have been completed.